What's up, Axie fam? Today, we're going to talk about the Toxic Troops team. This comp is all about control while letting poison slowly drain your opponent's life points. And it's versatile too, because even though your backliner with Gila is your most powerful Axie, technically any Axie on this team can finish out a match. This team utilizes cards like Tiny Turtle to stun your opponent's most powerful Axie and stall out the game a little bit longer. And Gila is also super important for getting that last big hit before letting the poison finish the job. As far as the charms go, we have Viper's Venom on all of our attack cards and HP charms on the rest, and this goes for every Axie on the team. But remember, it's never a bad idea to try out different charms to combat whatever you're facing in the arena, especially as we get later into the season, into the epic and mystic eras. But without further ado, let's hop into a match and see what this team can do. Now, when you first hop into a match, a great practice is to click on your opponent's axes. This will give you a full rundown of all of their cards and the runes and charms they have attached. This way you can learn where your biggest threat is and where to focus your attacks. In this match, I am equally worried about Momo and their backline beast. Now, technically you want to see poison cards in your opening hand, but there's a very interesting combo that you can pull off with Tiny Turtle and Gecko. If Tiny Turtle is the first card used in the turn, it'll apply sleep to both the target and to yourself, but Gecko will allow you to cleanse that. So we'll use the first Tiny Turtle to attack Momo, and since we don't want to wake Momo up by attacking her again, the second Tiny Turtle will hit the backline beast. Now we can use Gecko to damage our midliner, but heal and cleanse our other two axes. And it actually cleansed the weak instead of the sleep. In hindsight, we should have used the other Tiny Turtle first. That way, we could have cleansed both the weak and the sleep, but it is not the end of the world. And to finish things up, let's use the keep feature to retain Gecko for the following turn. Now with their Momo asleep, they should be worse off for options, but they do have a zero cost card in hand that they use to wake up their Momo, a Nutcracker from the back lane, and Cattail from the front, forcing Taunt onto the front lane Axie. Now we'll be forced to attack that front lane plant, but as long as we play our cards right, we should be fine. Now again, we didn't draw any poison cards this turn. We do have a Tiny Turtle and a Watermelon, however. So we use Tiny Turtle to put the Axie to sleep. Now we can use Gecko to wake ourselves back up. And finally, Watermelon. When attacking into an Axie that has sleep, you'll apply five more sleep counters. So while the attack will wake the Axie up, you'll put them right back to sleep. And it looks like the sleep really messed them up on this turn because they have to waste an energy just to wake up. And then they finish off the turn with a focused attack to the backliner. Now in this turn, we finally get some poison cards, so our options are pretty clear. We are going to throw out every poison card we have using the healing factor of the card to protect our backliner with Gila. And by the end, we have a decent amount of poison stacks on all of our opponents, and we are looking to be in a very healthy position. Now this Gecko card here will hurt my backliner, and since I want to keep him healthy, and since I have no other Tiny Turtles left in the deck, I decide not to play Gecko and just end my turn. Now this should be a big turn for my opponent since they are no longer asleep and they have three energy. They throw a, a big attack card to my frontliner and a huge attack to the back, but I am still in a good position. Now in this turn, there are some tough decisions to make. Gila is a huge damage card that will be absolutely necessary to finish out the match, but it's best used when the opponent has more poison counters on them. Now, if the opponent draws lucky, Momo could kill my backliner before I'm able to play Gila. But with the healing that I'd get from these poison cards, I think it's a safe bet to take. So we will go ahead and play all of our poison cards, healing our backliner in the process. And if we were smart, we would have retained Gila for the following turn, but apparently I was asleep at my desk playing this match. Now our opponent finally draws some of his backline beast cards and throws three haymakers into our front line bringing him down to just 17 HP. Now, this turn gives us a lot of options to pull off some tricky combinations. So we'll use Tiny Turtle first to stun their midline Momo. Next, we'll use Small Frill to increase their poison stacks. Now, finally, Grass Snakes increases their poison stacks by 50%. So if I target their backline beast, I will bring him up to 40 stacks, which is the max, and he will be very, very close to death. All right, this is looking good, but we are not out of the water yet. They managed to take out our frontliner with a nutcracker then a cucumber slice
Ice heals 50 HP and cleanses all their Axes, bringing their poison stacks down. And finally, they finish off the turn by summoning a Shiitake Mushroom, which will continue to heal them even more. And in this turn, we draw into our Gila, and the timing couldn't have been better. Gila is an AoE attack, and since they just summoned a Mushroom, I'd be able to kill two birds with one stone. Although, the Gila Axie is currently asleep, but it doesn't matter. If the only card I can play this turn is Gila, I would be in a great position. So, I play Green Thorns to wake my Axie up, and Gila to throw out massive damage across the entire team. Now the poison finishes off the beast and the rest of their team are just barely hanging on. Now at this point my opponent has to be mad and he takes out his anger on my backliner with Gila throwing out two big attacks and taking him out in one fell swoop. Now, in this turn, the only thing I want to accomplish is killing Momo. If I can make sure Momo is dead, then I can guarantee winning the match. So, I'll start off by playing Green Thorns, and then by calculating the poison counters, I can see Momo will still be alive at the beginning of next turn. So, I'll use Tiny Turtle to bring her down to killable HP. Then we can throw out our Revenge Swords, and look at that, we are just two poison counters away from a victory on this turn. But it is not over yet, remember this Axie has healing and a way to remove poison counters. And we see Cucumber Slice come out for some good heals, a Cattail as well for healing and taunt, and finally they throw out Beach for some decent damage, and that's the end of their turn. Now with a hand like this, we don't have much else to do but spam our cards, but it's not a bad situation. We're putting up a huge shield wall, which they're unlikely to break through, and letting that poison slowly drain that life away. And despite everything, they put up a valiant effort, managing to deal a decent amount of damage, but with only 39 HP, they are not long for this world. So let's throw out a green thorns and a grass snake to take our victory. This team has been a staple in Axie Origins since the game came out, and it's only been getting more and more powerful as it's been updated. So I hope you get a chance to mess around with it, and until next time, I'll see you in the arena.